Hey all your students, this is Pradesh Shaudhary Quantum Group. In this video, I am going to discuss a very good problem of classical mechanics from David Morin. David Morin is a classical mechanics book. It's having a very good collection of uh, very good questions. Uh, that is a uh, very handy for ITJ and Olympiad. So the question is, there is a uniform regular n-gon lamina having mass m and radius r. So what is a n-gon, regular n-gon? Regular n-gon is simply a regular polygon of having n sides, each sides having the same length. Uh, it has a mass m, radius r. So that regular n-gon can be circumscribed in some circle. The radius of that circle is that radius r. So we have to find the moment of inertia about an axis that pass, passes through its center and perpendicular to the plane. And that is that axis that passes through the center and perpendicular to the plane. So uh, you see that uh, we can divide this regular n-gon into n isocell triangle like this. So this is one of the isocell triangle, and this is the axis. This axis passes through one of the vertex and perpendicular to the plane. All such triangles. Suppose if I get the moment of inertia of this isocell triangle, so all these isocell triangle are symmetric with respect to the chosen axis. So if I get the moment of inertia about this of this isocell triangle about the chosen axis, so the overall moment of inertia is simply n times of the uh, that moment of inertia. So basically, uh, we have to do only one thing to find the moment of inertia of an isocell triangle about an about a corner the, that corner that is the uh, point of intersection of the equal sides and the axis perpendicular to the plane and then simply we will multiply the that answer by n. So let's go ahead and get the answer. So the main task is to find the moment of inertia of a isocell triangular lamina. Suppose I have this isocell triangular lamina having mass m0 and this vertex angle is 2 theta so this is theta and this is theta side length r so this length is r and axis of rotation passing through tip and perpendicular to the plane so this is that axis of rotation about which we have to find the moment of inertia so uh, before going ahead uh, first of all the main thing that we want to find the moment of inertia let me find the uh, surface mass density so this length is uh, this length is r sin theta and this is a perpendicular from this tip to the opposite side so this length is uh, r cos theta so it's sigma the surface mass density is mass upon area so mass and area is how much this area is the basically r sin theta into r cos theta is a triangular lamina so that is a sigma is r square uh, sin theta into cos theta so to find the moment of inertia, we have to divide the triangular lamina into some um, elements. The element that I want to take is a kind of a rectangular strip. And uh, this rectangular strip is say at a distance x from this tip. And this width is dx and suppose this length is obviously if this is x. So this length will be x ten theta. So area of this element would be, uh, the total length would be 2x tan theta which is dx. So area is 2x tan theta into dx. So the mass of this element would be dm would be sigma into da and that d is 2x tan theta into dx. Now this is a kind of a rod. So we have to find the moment of inertia of this rod type of element about this axis. So before that, let me find the moment of inertia about this axis. This axis passes through its uh, central mass and perpendicular to the length. So about this axis, moment of inertia would be kind of a ml square by 12. And then from here to here, we have to add m into d square, distance square. So di about o is, uh, let me say this axis is c. So that is the moment of inertia about axis C plus that mass dm into the perpendicular distance between the 
to x square. So that is x square. And this DIC, uh, we can go to the next page. So DIO is equal to uh, DIC plus DM into X square. And DIC is a DM into C. This total length of this rod type of element is 2X tan theta. So that moment of inertia is DM into 2X tan theta whole square by 12. So DM into 2x tan theta whole square by 12 and this is actually DIC so from both I can take DM common so there will be x square and then uh, let me write the value of DM this was sigma into 2x tan theta dx 2x tan theta dx I have left some space between them so for that, uh, I'll take x square common from these two elements. So x square also I'm taking outside. And now within the bracket, what I will remain with, this is a 4 10 square theta by 12. That is a 10 square theta by 3 and plus 1. So that is a 1 plus 10 square theta by 3. And now let me put the value of sigma. So sigma was m, m naught divide by that area area was r square sine theta into cos theta and here this is a 2x cube uh, dx and then 10 theta and then 1 plus 10 square theta by 3 into dx so more simplification will give me m naught the sine theta sine theta will get cancelled so m naught to m naught and uh, divide by that will be r square would be here and from 10 theta sine theta by cos theta sine theta would get cancelled so in the denominator there will be cos square theta and all that thing i will write as it is 1 plus 10 square theta and there's a x cube into dx so I have to integrate this to get the total moment of inertia. So that overall moment of inertia is I naught I about O. So that I about O is this integration of that thing. So that integration So now the total moment of inertia of the whole triangular isosceles triangular lamina about the axis O that is a say I O and this is the integration of this whole thing. So all the constant things I have taken outside R square cos square theta 1 plus 10 square theta x cube dx and see from where to where I have to take the limit. So limit of this x will go from, this is from 0 to here. So this length is basically r cos theta. So limit of x will go from 0 to r cos theta. So this limit will go from 0 to r cos theta. So if I integrate this, this integration will give me r power 4 cos power 4 theta by 4. So putting here, we'll get 2m naught divided by r square cos square theta that integration will give me r power 4 cos power 4 theta by 4 and 1 plus actually this was 10 square theta by 3 so by 3 also so 1 plus 10 square theta by 3 so just simplify more so this that will become m naught r square by 2 see from here and here this cos square theta and cos power 4 theta will give me cos square theta and let me take that cos square theta inside that bracket so that will be cos square theta into 
cos square theta into tan square theta sin square theta. So that is a sin square theta by 3. So more simplification m naught r square by 2. This cos square theta is a 1 minus sin square theta. So 1 minus sin square theta plus sin square theta by 3. So we will get how much m naught r square by 2 1 minus 2 by 3 sin square theta. So now the main job is done now just the multiplication. So this is a regular n gone, total mass is m and I have chosen this part, uh, this part, the, this angle is theta, this angle is theta and this is r and the mass of this part is m naught. The moment of inertia that I got here, I of this part about O was m naught into r square by 2. 1 minus 2 by 3 sin square theta that's what we got and now see uh, the each part this whole angle is this whole angle is 2 pi radian so that 2 theta is 2 pi by n radian so 2 theta is 2 pi by n radian so theta is pi by n radian so theta is pi by n radian. So this is a m naught into r square by 2, 1 minus 2 by 3, sin square pi by n. Now the total moment of inertia i is n times of this moment of inertia i u because there are n parts so that is a n into m naught r square by 2 1 minus 2 by 3 sin square pi by n m naught is the mass of this part so n into m naught is the total mass of this regular n gone so in place of n into m naught i can just write that capital m so this is the moment of inertia of this regular n gone about an axis that passes through its center and perpendicular to the plane of motion. That's what I was just. Thank you.